It's the apocalypse, Kyle. Coronavirus has wiped out human civilization. And we got... We are now... Very <laughs> serious <laughs> characters. <laughs> yeah, we have to fight to maintain our defense of Kellogg Frosted Flakes. See, I clearly have a personality because I have a pipe and a baseball bat. I got a helmet <laughs> and a bayonet dagger thing. So... We're pe- real human people that are real humans. This is my character. This is my whole character. Is my pipe and my baseball. <laughs> Movie is fucking stupid. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the 103rd episode of Good Bad and Bad, Good Bad or Bad Bad, the show we watch share movies to tell you. Should too. I'm your host, Mr. Ryan Chilo. Joined as always, once again, in the flesh. Oh yeah, this is the one we recorded this second, but this is the first episode you're seeing post TV, Kyle. School children like playing hopscotch out front of the building. And I was like, okay, so either this is, <laughs> we thought it was safe enough uh, for, there's only two of us, you know, we just keep those meetings under 10 people, but there's only two of us. So we're all good on oh, spilling tobacco on the table from, Actually. My, from my very important character pipe. <laughs> um. It's definitely tobacco. Um. <laughs> I smoke two joints when I get up. In the car, I smoke two joints. It actually is. <laughs> uh, uh, um, so what the fuck are we talking about? She, the 1984 movie She. Yes, yeah, so this, this is like a weird mix of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Yep. In like every 80s apocalypse, Mad Mac. Greetings from the humongous, the Lord humongous, the warrior of the wasteland. But it's also a little Mad Max at times. No vehicles. It feels very old, but it's set in the future. Yes, it is set in the uh, 23 years after the cancellation. uh, Cancel? No, no, it's uh, a. Yeah, it's cancellation. Is it? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yo, it is cancellation. You're right. Um. And and that's when the nukes blew everything up, maybe? I guess so. Because, well, that's what we get. The, so the opening of this movie is... So anyways, it's the crazy 1984 uh, fucking signed, kind of like you said, sword and sandal uh, post-apocalypse craziness. Um, uh, this was recommended by a patron numerous times, and it was finally... It, they they just added it to Amazon Prime streaming. Yeah, it was, so we were just like, perfect. Oh, perfect timing. Look at that. Because before, I had to find it like an illegal version or, or try to order it like a Blu-ray. Was, one of our fans is like works at Amazon <laughs> was like, like put this on there <laughs> um um uh it, it, the opening title card is impossible to read so I'm not oh, in it's yeah. in some script that I was like and the, what? The, not only that they have the opening title card and then they have like something from the novel which this is based off oh, of oh yeah it's based on and a you book. can't read it no I gotta do this on the podcast <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, you can't read any of it. It's it's wild. And then, um, but then we get these cool like paintings of like the nuclear holocaust happening. I think, and there's like a uh, Grim Reaper and stuff. It's kind of wild. Um, uh, it is, and I love. Did, did you notice? I I'm sure you noticed the the reveal of the title of the film. It's it says a film by Avi Nesher or something like that. Yeah, the guy's yeah. name is Avi Nesher. Is mm-hmm. the director? It says a film by Avi Nesher, and then all of the letters in his name fade away except for she in his last name. <laughs> <laughs> and they zoom in and it's like she yeah. and I was like oh man that's gotta be the. this has to be the only movie where the director's name morphs into the name of the movie that is a wild choice that is a really interesting choice Um, so we're 23 years after the world ended, and it apparently seemed to end around the early 1980s because that's <laughs> yes. when all of the stuff is from. Because that's when this movie was made. <laughs> everybody and everybody still has their 80s hair. Oh yeah, everybody still has their 80s hair. Uh, all the uh, all the boxes of food uh, and stuff that we see are all from the 80s. Uh, and uh, some people arrive on a on a on a barge. Mm-hmm. That's how this movie starts. Two brothers and a sister. Yeah. Right. Tom. Some whatever the other guy's name is, and the sister. Yeah. And Tom, I swear, looks exactly like Sting from the police. You're not wrong. I didn't notice it at first, but you were not wrong. He looks a lot like Sting <laughs> if Sting grew his hair out to a, a not so great length <laughs> for him. Um, so, Tom, these are our main characters. Uh, they arrive in this land. They're travelers, I guess, and they go to a market mm. immediately. They end up in this market where they're selling 1980s cornflakes. Selling <laughs> Kellogg's cornflakes and laundry detergent. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, exclusively items from the early 1980s. And then an evil, evil gang immediately shows up and chaos breaks out. They, they are, they are, um, what's the right way to say them? Post-apocalyptic, like, Mad Max Nazis? Yes, <laughs> that is, post-apocalyptic Mad Max Nazis is a good way to describe them. But some of them, some of them have swastikas, but then some of them have, like, Red Cross, like, like the, or the, like. The Iron Cross, the, or, yeah. No, 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 well, no, it, I mean, it's not the Iron Cross. It's specifically, like, the Red Cross, like, the, 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 the aid like, organization. Oh. <laughs> they have, like, just red, it's weird. Um. Yeah, but they're, they're evil Nazi gang show up, uh, and we, who we don't see again until the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> um, because this movie turns into the Odyssey, kind of. <laughs> yeah. This movie's something. Um, and they they're, they're, these Nazis show up, and there's a big fight, and they, they start kid taking people, and they kidnap, they harpoon. <laughs> they Okay, so they, they are kicking the shit out, oh, of, yeah, that's out, of, right. out of Sting and his Sting friend. and his brother, yeah. Yeah, and, and they're, they're just... Kicking the shit out of them, and then the sister wants to run in and help. She gets harpooned in the leg and dragged Har off. Harpooned in the fucking knee. She takes an arrow to the knee, Kyle. Her adventure days are over. <laughs> God, is actually that, is they're that, just getting started, oh, Kyle. Is that too old? Is that too old of a, a reference to make? It's too terrible of a reference to make. I hated myself <laughs> as soon as I did. Um, but my favorite thing is one, the soundtrack is insane. Mm. It's just this it pumping eighties rock over the top of all this. And then my other favorite thing is in the scene is we, there, there's this one character that we see who's part of the Nazi gang who is wearing a boxing helmet and has a boxing glove on one hand <laughs> and brass knuckles on the other <laughs> And all I could think of, this one's for love, this one's for love. One for play. <laughs> Let me tell you the story of left hand, right hand. Yeah, left hand, right hand. <laughs> Good mercy. It really is. It's hilarious. Ugh. I was like, he's got a boxing glove and a fucking and uh, brass knuckles. Um, but uh, they get their ass kicked. But then yeah. the scene just kind of ends. It just ends abruptly. And then they're they're not. I mean, they're not fine, but they're not dead. Even though they were just getting their the shit kicked out of them. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're not dead. They just leave them unconscious. I guess I don't know. Mm. Um, and then we hard cut to the cult of she. Which that's one of my other most interesting things about this movie. Our main hero, mm -hmm. she is her name. Is a cult leader. Is a straight up vicious murdering cult leader. Yeah. She straight up sacrifices people <laughs> as part. It's wild. This is like if James Earl Jones would turn into the good guy in Conan. All the gods, they cannot sever us. If I were dead and you are still fighting for life, I'd come back from the darkness. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. In Co <laughs> I thought you were talking about specifically James Earl Jones. You're talking about the character he plays yeah, in yeah. Conan. Who, who, who is, what, is this, what is the dude's I name? don't remember. It's been, I Whatever. think I saw that when I was a kid. Whatever. So the dude who uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger chops the head off of. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers for Conan. Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but no, we find out, like, she's legitimately leading this. Oh, no. I got. Oh, it's from this stupid pipe. <laughs> so there's all these people chanting she, and she comes out. And she, there's these four dudes tied to a rock. Four chiseled dudes yes. who are waxed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oiled up, oiled up, chained to a rock. Uh, this is also, this movie's very horny. This movie oh, is yeah. so horny the whole time. But it's also, there's only nudity in one part, like very short amount of nudity, mm. but it's very horny the whole film. Um, and my, but that's one part of nudity and everything else is just oh, enough. <laughs> this movie could be called She- colon tale of the side boob like that <laughs> could be like the subtitle for this or, movie or tinfoil bikini yeah uh, or 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 the under cheek <laughs> like we get a lot of <laughs> yeah um but i love it there's one guy in particular in this moment that's chained to the rock or whatever. he is oh, really God. struggling they're like all right and struggle and action and he's like no 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 you can't have my chisel <laughs> you can't fuck me and then kill me no <laughs> Wait, 
Which is, I think, what is implied to happen. What, what happened to these guys? Crushed pelvis. <laughs> Yeah, but I think that's literally what happens is that she has sex with them and then sacrifices them to some, I don't know, she kills them for some reason. Mm. Uh, we never actually see that, but we get like a cut real quick that maybe implies that that's what happens. And then she tries to stab our guy later uh, as part of the same situation. Oh, and then, and but then, but then it cuts directly from that to her riding a horse out in the countryside <laughs> with no explanation of where, what, when any of this occurs. But she's riding a horse down the countryside. We had, we've had a weird couple of films that are just nonsensical in narrative. Y- yeah. I mean, that tends to be our fare here. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of the whole point of the show, can, Kyle. We kind of go for them. Yeah. Um, but she gets, but our guys are now awake. They're no mm. longer unconscious, or at least Tom isn't. Uh, and he knock clotheslines her off the horse and knocks her out cold, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he just leaves horse. her there and steals her horse and runs off and gets his brother and takes him to the city mm. uh, where they are immediately poisoned and and kidnapped by a woman that they run into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're right. This almost turns exactly into the Odyssey. Yeah, no, it is. It's yeah, 100 percent like the Odyssey. Yeah, basically. Uh, but the bro- the brother wakes up in a thing of pigs. He, he's yeah. He's so after this woman, they they eat. She gives them food and they pass out. And then he wakes up and he's chained to a, in the pigsty, basically. Mm. Symbolism, <laughs> and then um, he is kind of a, d- a douche in this movie. He, 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 he has a character arc, we'll say. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a douche early on, and then at one point he tries to eat a woman, and <laughs> which we'll talk about. And then uh, and then he becomes a, a good guy by the end of the movie, because um, even the brothers like, yeah, he's a jerk. I kind of what, what kind him. of repercussions are there? Like, nah, not a lot. Not, <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> um, People don't really suffer for their bad actions in this film. No, not at all. Not at all. There's no, no. And she, like we said, she leads a cult, a murder cult, a murder sex cult, Mm -hmm. which sounds great, but she leads a murder sex cult and then by the end, nothing changes and she's just our hero and we're all like, yay, murder cult. Good job, murder cult leader. We love you. (laughs) You saved the day. Uh, and then Tom wakes up and oh he gets he gets given to she as like a as like a prisoner right he ends up in the prison she's prison yeah he yeah, ends up yeah yeah, yeah. He, he was sold to she she was sold to she yeah he, <laughs> sold to she <laughs> sold to she <laughs> what anyways um so he wakes up in the prison and she she's like ah you again he's like sorry about the horse thing earlier get this one out hey listen I really am sorry the only one spoken to and then, um, uh, and then they take him up to sack. For, no, what happens? Uh, oh, they tell she has him walk the path. Which yes, this scene means yeah. nothing. This what? scene is meaningless. What is this? And he he's literally being skewered by these wooden stakes. Walking the path means take him to the beach where we have all those stakes set up and have him walk through them while we like push him. And the entire time, the only thing that was going through my head as they were pushing him was don't stand so close to me. <laughs> <laughs> and the blood in this scene oh, is neon oh. red. It yeah. is so it is, it is like the 1960s uh, West, spaghetti western. We need some blood in this scene. Get shot. Yeah, it is ne- almost neon orange red. Mm. It's It looks so ridiculous. Um, so he gets stabbed a bunch, but I guess he passed the test. Mm. I don't because they don't kill him then. Um, and then they just let him go. They let him go because he passed the test, I think. Let him cross alone. I was already very confused at this point. Oh no, no, he, he wakes up in the, the scientist's lair, that one character who's in the movie for five minutes and then never again. The 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 guy with all the Playboys on his wall. You know who I'm talking about? Our guy wakes up and he's in like the scientist's oh, right, lab right, layer. Yeah. And the guy's like You must mean the dogs. Well, they're awful too. But if they've got your sister, well, you might as well forget about her. Why? Because you'll never reach Nork Valley. Well, you gotta get to Nork, and uh, the only person who knows how to get to Nork is she. These are real words in the movie that are said by characters, kind of. Who would know the way? Ah, uh, I don't. Uh, she. She the goddess. Only she knows the way. Um, and, and, yeah, he has a bunch of playboys. Don't know why. Don't know what that means, but it's the other time we see boobs in the movie. So there's a whole wall of playboys for some reason. Um, but they let him go, and then he, he goes to get his brother, brings mm-hmm. him free. And then they break into She's castle so that they can get her to take them 
to Nork to save their sister. I think. Right? What? <laughs> right? Because then she's going to do her murder fuck. That makes... <laughs> she's going to do her fuck murder. And they're in the crowd watching the fuck murders uh, ch- choosing <laughs> ceremony. And then they they swap out the fuck murder victim and they are in there and then she goes to she's like and then he dodges it and then they kidnap her right am i did i hallucinate this whole movie kyle that's what happens right (laughs) there's a lot of things that happen that make little to no sense and good luck trying to follow it yeah oh i gotta talk about we we missed the one moment that is a fucking was ill prepared for it it made me laugh out loud is when they he breaks his brother out of the woman who poisoned them oh he just <laughs> decks her she walks in he walks in and she goes hey what are you doing and he just looks at her and uppercuts her and they walk out in the scene <laughs> and so i was like k-o all right holy shit <laughs> Uh, and also, I love too that uh, that she just has knives everywhere. She just like she puts them like in her. She has knives in her back and yeah, in which her boots and in her later. Like she has. First off, she has so f- little clothing to begin with. Yes. How the fuck does she even hide them? I don't know. Well, she has that slouchy t-shirt, <laughs> all one shoulder off t-shirt thing she yeah. wears that hides her knives. Uh, but she gets rid of that eventually and just runs around in her her napkin her, of her, a her bikini leggy. covering <laughs> on her butt. That part, that that covering on her butt literally covers about 15% of her butt. <laughs> it's so small. It's ridiculous. Um, but then she, she has to do her trial thing now. Mm. She leaves. And I can just say she. That's her name and yeah. who she is. Yeah. Um, she leaves and she goes to this cave right outside her castle mm. that's full of garbage mm-hmm. and fights people. Mm-hmm. And there's like this crazy fight scene where she fights a knight and a uh, who are hiding in in boxes. boxes. And one of them is a, a gladiator wearing mm. gladiator armor. One of them is a knight wearing old knight armor. And one of them is a robot. One of them's no. Well, yes, but it's fucking it's Frankenstein. It's fucking yeah, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. And but before that, she also fights three like samurais, kind of. The, this movie is just like what 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 uh, what props do we have lying around the film? Like it's just like what do we got? We got just random nonsense we got on the back lot. Let's just make a but movie out she, of it. She is victorious. She bites the bolt off of Frankenstein's <laughs> neck and it causes his head to explode. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, she she has to go to the recovering pool or whatever. That's where and she this was is going. Where we get them boobies. <laughs> That's where we get the boobies. Um, but the thing that I found interesting, so she, she goes to this pool and it's guarded by an, uh, a wise old evil lady or whatever, <laughs> a wise witch or whatever, and she tells her the prophecy. The prophecy still stands. A man will come to claim your heart. For him, you will break your vow. Through him, you will be destroyed. That she will one day meet a man who she'll fall in love with, but when she does, it'll she'll lose her throne or something like that, um, which is like the setup for why she, what happens at the end of the movie. Um, but so she goes to bathe in this pool and it heals her. But mm. The thing I didn't understand, Kyle, she wouldn't have needed to be healed in this pool if she hadn't gone into the cave and fought the dudes in the first place. So what was the point of going into the cave at all? Because she wasn't injured previously prophecy but she already has done that before she knew that maybe it de-ages her maybe it's maybe. maybe it's full of sweet sweet man nectar that's a call forward you don't even know what we're talking about yet you don't even know what we're talking about yet <laughs> call forward uh maybe it's full of sweet sweet man nectar it is two scenes where that ha- there's two back-to-back movies where that happens and you don't even know what the other movie we're talking about but you could probably guess from context clues of the sweet sweet man nectar and bathing in it and Thanks becoming for making my editing more challenging healed. <laughs> No, you don't have to put. No, you don't have to because you don't know. There, you know, there's no clips. You're not revealing the secret yet, Kyle. We're just referencing something that doesn't exist yet. Just spend a whole bunch of question marks over <laughs> <laughs> the X Files theme. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and then she gets kidnapped mm-hmm. by the the boys, uh, mm-hmm. Tom and his brother, whatever. Again, I don't care or know what Tom's brother's name is. Uh, they're hanging out one night and they sleep one night in a like a little abandoned power station or something. And uh, <laughs> I love that our good guy just casually gropes the woman they kidnapped and they're like, hey, hey. <laughs> jokes. <laughs> um, and then Ugh. but then they get then they get uh, they get caught by guys with chainsaws. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the these are these are the mutants, like the mummy mu- gang. The mu- <laughs> yeah, because they 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 are mutants who are falling apart. Yes, literally falling apart. Yeah, and they have chainsaws, and they are trying to put them into a trash compactor. They lit- they they gotta do Star Wars. They do the trash compactor scene from Star Wars. This guy's name is like Krang or something. Cram. Cram. Get it? Oh, because the cram? trash compactor. Oh. oh. So they uh. This guy's, yeah, and they're all wrapped up like mummies, but it's because they all have, like, radiation sickness. You know, they're, like, literally, like, melting or whatever, and they try to smush him to death in a trash compactor. Um, but uh, Shanda, or whatever her name is, the second-in-command lady. She, too. <laughs> yeah, she, too. Um, she shows up uh, with seashells by the she sh- <laughs> seashore. Um, she, they show up, and they she saves them just in time. My favorite part about this whole thing, though, mm-hmm. is they get there, and they open the door, and the, the compactor is shut completely. And so, like, she's like, oh, no, they got smushed. And then they figure out how to back it up. She, like, pushes, like, eight buttons and finally figures out how to back it up. And it backs up, and she walks in and is looking at the wall, like, oh, no. And then the camera pans over, and they're all just standing against the wall or hit, hit like, in a window, basically, against the wall. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh! And I'm like, you walked... They're, like, two yeah, feet from... They're right, they're right there. They're right there! And she, like... I didn't, I didn't see them at all, because anything off-camera doesn't exist, Kyle. <laughs> anything yeah. on... Also, whenever they're, like, putting... Whenever they're bracing themselves to try and stop the wall... It, it kind of gives quite a bit. It does in Star Wars, too. If you've ever looked closely, if you've ever looked closely, the moment, and maybe it's because Chewbacca's very strong, but there's a moment where Chewbacca pushes on it, and you can see the wall kind of, just a little, It's it slows down a little bit. I've always, since I was a little kid, I noticed that, and I was like, man, Chewbacca must be really strong. Of course he is. It took a moon to kill him. Yeah, and he rips people's arms off. Oh, and speaking of ripping arms off, uh, she rips that dude's yeah, arm off. Because he's, he's essentially a leper. Yeah, he goes, parts of me will fall off. And she goes, er, and rips his arm off. Get in there. I told you to watch the arm. Fucking wild. Told you. Oh, I love it. Um, uh, just real quick, I was looking through IMDb, and in the, the parental guidance section on IMDb, there's this quote. As with the violence and gore, there's little in this movie that adults would find disturbing. And I was like, false. There's so much I find disturbing about this movie. Uh, so so uh, Sting and, and Bro are... Oh, being, they get to the hippie commune. Yeah, so they're, they're being told to... They're, they're going to continue their journey. Yeah. Even though they kidnapped her. And they're not, the queen. Whatever. They let her leave. But yeah. she goes to follow them. She goes to follow them because she's, she's... Interested. Interested. She's curious I'm about curious. them. Curious. Why? I'm curious. Go back with the guys. So they go to the hippie commune who she wants that sting dick is what she wants. <laughs> who are just like well, it's supposed to be like the civilized people. Yeah. But at night, they, they hold a dark secret. Oh my. Also, also, bro is a uh, very rapey. Oh, bro is he tries to eat a woman. He tries to eat her, which is that they do that as a joke, like the turnaround we get yeah. at nighttime. But he's literally it's so weird. He like they're dancing like I love. So at first they're like a, it looks like something out of a Star Trek episode, like where they, mm. you know, Kirk goes down and they're yeah. just like, they're like, oh, do like, you want welcome, some wine? Welcome to our culture. Our paradise. Yeah, they're like a pastoral like, uh, and, like then, and then, wow, this seems like a great place. Maybe we should model our society after them. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're cannibal vampires. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, but they, uh, so they have like a very gl- glittery, uh, fancy dinner with like bow ties and sleeveless shirts. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but, uh, during, then they dance and I love too. They're like, Would you like to dance? No, I don't think so. The wonderful old world custom dance. You should try it. Dance? What is dance? And they're like, it's an old world tradition. And I'm like, Dancing wouldn't disappear. Dancing has like been a thing for the ever, as long as humanity has existed. Dancing has been a thing. It, it's not like it's not like television where it's like oh you wouldn't know what that is. It's like <laughs> dancing. Okay, sure. Um, 
but uh, uh, yeah, then he literally tries to eat her, and she keeps pushing him off, and he's like, nom, 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 nom. I'm like, what is happening? This is fucking insane. Yeah, he's real rapey. Um, and, and this is the part where the, the, the guy's like, your brother's kind of an asshole, and he's like, a friend seems slightly overenthusiastic. My friend's an asshole. Yeah, he is. <laughs> it's like, all right, at least he admits well, they, it. They fall asleep that night. Yeah. Still dressed in their formal wear. <laughs> yeah. And during this moment, she she shows Frank, up and can she... You, can you... No, I got I to gotta illustrate what she oh, does. Okay, okay. Because they, there's a locked door. You have me a little concerned. There's a, <laughs> <laughs> there's a locked door and she, like, tickles the lock open oh, yeah, with her knife. I don't even know what she does, <laughs> but it just opens. Um, But they're sleeping and then yeah. we start to notice. And they start, yeah, they start changing and then they start attacking the the bro for the most part. I guess they attack. They Steve attack well. everybody, but the bro yeah. gets swarmed. But they all get stabbed to death. Yeah, she shows up and just stabs everybody. Mm. Like, and I love there's one guy that like belly flops at her. He's like, <laughs> and then she just moves out of the way. But they stab everybody, and then the final one left is the the girl he was trying to eat earlier. Now she's trying to eat him. Oh, uh, uh, and then she gets stabbed <laughs> and dies. <laughs> What was that? And then, but they find in this room, they find like human body parts, like mm. she does when they're searching through. It's like, oh, they, because they were eating a, a meat yeah. dinner, and I was like, oh, they were eating. It's people. Soylent Green is people. <laughs> yeah. um, Listen to me, Hatcher. You gotta tell them Soylent Green is people. <laughs> but the dumbest thing about that is that the meat we see them eating is like very clearly like chicken or something because there's like little drumsticks. I'm like, what is that on a human? Babies, maybe baby legs, maybe. Maybe there's like really meaty fingers. <laughs> maybe meaty fingers or baby legs, because it makes no sense otherwise for it to be any so body do, part. Do you, th- do you think this is the uh, the alternative uh, culture where they went for uh, Jonathan Swift's modest proposal? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But they're actually vampires though, also or something. Who knows? It's okay. weird. Um, but they, they leave, and now uh, Sting's bro is like in this suit he's in this tux now oh yeah he can't get out of for like most no. of the film he just he's like oh, i'm tired of wearing weird shit i'm just gonna wear a suit for the rest of this movie uh and then they enter the land of godin yes <laughs> this is the most bizarre it's so weird i love everything about this so part. they go to the cult and you know it's, it's people in like they have axes and they're all in cloaks yeah this is like it's like an it, abbey yeah, like, yeah. It, it's like it's very inquisition or, or yeah, 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 and and then they 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 they're it's Godan. There's posters everywhere, mm-hmm. and it's sort of Maoist looking, you know, like mm-hmm. like kind of thing. Um, and they get inside, they get they get jumped and brought inside and brought before Godan, who comes out carried on a you know on a little like king cart thingy. <laughs> but like you just think, oh, it's just some guy who's a like cult running a cult. Yeah, no, he has magic powers. <laughs> He has his eyes turn green. Yeah. And he holds people in place and he has like he, he's telekinesis. He, he he has he he has telekinesis and like um uh a Kilgrave power from like uh uh Jessica Jones or whatever the guy like he can t- make people do what he wants. Like he can mind control them basically. But yeah, he can also like fling them around and it, he he picks up the second she she too and like swings her around in midair for 5 and, minutes and, and she's stuff. Like, let me down. Let me down. Let me down. Let me down. Like, for like like a minute and a half. Let me down. Let me down. <laughs> Um, and then the two guys lie, mainly bro lies. It's like, yeah, you know, we're, we're all for Godan, man. We're, we're Godan uh, Sh- uh, pilgrims. That's we, why we're we here. We were for Godan before it was even cool. <laughs> yeah, we do. We big Godan heads over here. <laughs> Godan, Godan, yeah. Do you believe in the one God, the only God, Godan? Yeah, sure. Listen, we're pilgrims, right? Um, but they're there to see, they say they're there to see Godan. He's like, cool, feed them and let them leave. These two, though, torture them to death. Yes. <laughs> And we get the whipping for quite some time. Oh, my time. God. That's what I was talking about. This movie is super horny. This director just was like, and then we strap him to the wall and, and whip, him whip him for like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it's pretty wild. Um, they get tortured in a very sexy fashion to sexy rock guitar, like we said. <laughs> Uh, and then there's a uh, oh I love too the burning scene like with the, they pull like a, a brand out of the fire mm-hmm. and they're like inching it closer to her face for literally like five minutes it's like uh 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 and then the music <laughs> keeps building and they're like uh <laughs> and it just never happens 
Oh, and then they uh, they're they're hearing them scream yeah, while they're the, being the brothers, fed. I guess get a conscience. They or get something. a conscience. They're like, okay, we got to help them. We can't let them just torture these ladies to death. Uh, so they beat up the guys. They get in. They they murder all the torturer guys. Uh, they crunch one in like a weird nail mm-hmm. torture device thingy. It's pretty wild. Um, uh, and then they they don't they need to get to Godan because. Uh, the second or uh, Shanda or whatever her name is was in the torture room, but she has been taken to Godan. Yeah, he and wants to. He wants to fornicate with her. Yes, that's a, that's um, a good word for it. And uh, we all, we failed to mention his his like second in command assistant lady. I don't remember her name, but she's like she's like his second in command. Um, the lady, um, and she's very jealous that he wants to be with she, because this lady wants to be with him. And so when he takes she up to her, <laughs> the title of this movie and the name of this character make it almost incomprehensible to talk yeah. about. Yeah. She takes, he takes she up to the room. She does. The, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then, uh, but they, they go, she, in. She, she backstabs. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they like break into Godan's room. They're trying, she to, helps him. Yeah. Uh, Not she, <laughs> The, the but he evil uses his powers to be like, "Hey, I'm gonna lock you guys against the wall and throw you around." Uh, my favorite is he makes a guy headbutt the wall. <laughs> yeah, Boink, yeah. He runs him and into the wall. then the, the woman who's the second in command, he's like, "Strike them down and and you know yeah. prove your loyalty or whatever." And she just takes Axes an axe him. right to the chest and then has some of the best lines in the movie. The <laughs> d- delivery on her line, she's like. We believed in you, and you betrayed us. It's amazing. You're a man, and you're dying. Is what she said. I do like how he uses the last of his power to strangle her to death with a curtain. And nobody, and nobody has anything. Sting is standing right there with, with an, an axe. axe. He just lets her die. He's just like, <laughs> not my fight, man. I don't know. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> he literally just stands there and watches oh. her choke to death, and when he could easily save her. Um... Uh, yeah, because he's like, I'm a god. And she's like, no, you're a man and you're dying. It's amazing. You're a man and you're dying. Mm. Um, and I was, yeah, they don't help her. Uh, and then they run out and this is uh, what happens. Uh, they get gassed in the woods um, <laughs> and they get taken away by uh, well, Randall they, Rudolph. They, they, is, yeah, they, they find some... <laughs> The tutu wearing so Rudolph. fucking weird. The editing of this originally confused the shit out of me because we're seeing our main character walk through the woods mm-hmm. and then we're cutting to a shot of feet in like pink ballet flats. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was our main heroes. And I was like, have I just never noticed he's wearing pink ballet flats? Tom is this whole time. But no, it's this other character we're introduced to for a half second. His name, their name is Rudolph. Randolph. Rudolph. I think it's Rudolph. Rudolph. But like they, they, it takes all of them to take him down because he is a hulk of a man. He's gigantic, and they tackle him, and then uh, the smoke comes, and they all pass out, and then they get taken by Rudolph to a lab where they get put in plastic baggies. <laughs> And uh, but they get taken to this lab where uh, this fabulous doctor, <laughs> mad scientist, very heavy lipstick. Uh, uh, but he's dressed in like 17th century um, Col- aristoc- like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like aristocrat, um, right, uh, like Mozart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he looks like yeah, he looks like Mozart or something. And uh, he's a mad scientist trying to do something. We never find out. It doesn't really matter. But he's got them in plastic baggies, and then he sends. Uh, Shanda with Ru- Rudolph to go get some magic crystal that doesn't matter. I can send her to get it. This is an interesting proposal. Very well. Rudolph. But they leave. And then while they're gone, she swings and knocks over and burns the whole greenhouse down. Mm-hmm. And that it frees them because I, it I, melts their plastic. I, I wish there was something where they were trying to get a word out to um, to Tom. Because oh yeah, Tom's not here at yeah, this yeah. point. He got he, away. He wasn't captured. He got he climbed um, a tree. I wish there was a point where they were trying to get a message out to him because then they could be his message in a <laughs> bottle. <laughs> get out. Get what? Out. He's sting. I gotta make the police reference. Get the fuck out. <laughs> uh, they burn down a greenhouse and they get away. Oh, and then then this is we gotta talk about Xerox. Because yes, so I uh, hate it's, everything about this. This film was shot in '83. This is when Robin Williams was getting pretty damn big as as far as being a comedian and also get, just breaking into film stuff. And so this was basically him as Popeye on even more drugs. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's he, he's doing Popeye for like the first second when they show up. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then this guy changes characters constantly. He mm-hmm. just does impressions. Yeah, because he's supposed to be like manic and crazy. Yeah, I guess that's the idea. Yeah, he, he's protecting this bridge, and his way he protects it is just by tripping people a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but his uh, his name's Xerox or Xenox or whatever, and he uh, our guy uh, Tom is crossing the bridge. And gets fed up with him, and just starts cutting his limbs off. And every time he cuts a limb off, he, gr- he grows a new him, a new him, and he multiplies because he's copying himself. Oh. Yeah. And then he keeps cutting limbs off, and eventually there's like eight of him. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I love in the close-ups they show it's the same actor each time, mm-hmm. but then when the wide shot, it's very clearly eight oh, different yeah. people wearing yeah. similar getups. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. And he keeps cutting the limbs off. I'm like, hey, idiot. You see what's happening here. Yeah. Stop cutting his limbs off. Smart enough for that. He's really not. Um, But finally, he has found the Nazis again. Yes, yes. Is he captured or does he? We don't really see what happens. We really don't see that. It just kind of disappears. And then we cut back to our people Mm -hmm. um, who then also get to the bridge. She too, Shin. Shin. We haven't seen her in a while. She's gone. She's gone. We thought, I thought maybe she died in production and they just wrote her out of the movie or something. But no, she comes back. Um, but they uh, uh, they get to the bridge, and I'm like, oh, God, if we have to do this whole comedy yep, routine with Xerox again, fucking A. But it's a little bit shorter because they just throw them off the bridge and blow them up, which I thought yeah. was fun. Because <laughs> the bridge, underneath the bridge, is just minefield. full of landmines. Yeah, there's a minefield. Like, this is an old no man's land or something from the war mm-hmm. in previous times or whatever. And they throw them off the bridge, and he explodes. And I'm like, well, now you have millions of yeah, him. Yeah, All those little, pieces. Little bitty pieces. <laughs> yeah. But I love, too, what's his name is like... Uh, the bro dude is like, she's like, oh, there's bombs down there. And he's like, what was that? A bomb. A what? A bomb. Bomb? What's a bomb? <laughs> like, there are clearly bombs still in this world. How do you not know? Okay, fine. Um, They go in and I guess you can only be, only, only men can be gladiators for this. Like, It's a cult. This Nazi cult is a bunch of dudes and you can join every now and then by fighting to the death with other yeah, and, initiates and only, and only two, two yeah join the cult yeah. um and they're uh yeah they're like a nazi sex death cult lots of death sex cults in this mm. movie um some good some bad <laughs> um and they uh but they get to the gladiatorial combat where they're having dinner and the these care this is what we were making fun of at the <laughs> beginning where they're all just like this I am wacky. This yeah. is my character. I am I have the- face paint and helmet upside down and <laughs> This this monocle is my personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the camera slow pans over all of these people, um, and two of them we know are are uh, uh, she and um, bro are <laughs> I've hiding. Been forgetting this the entire time. I like how when you're in twenty year twenty three years past the end of mankind, priorities are Kellogg's Frosted Flakes or Corn Flakes, what have you, laundry detergent. And the massive amount of eyeshadow oh, that man. she has. Oh, man. You got to have the eyeshadow. She's not the only one. All the dudes are rocking so much, like, war paint face yeah, makeup yeah. and stuff. All these guys at this dinner have, like, crazy makeup and stuff on. Yeah, yeah the, the main dude has, like, weird face paint as yeah, well. Yeah, who we never see. Like, he, this this movie sequel baits, kind of, which is, oof, that was a decision to make. Um, uh, yeah, but so they, get, they go out to do their gladiatorial combat in the arena. Mm-hmm. Everybody fights. They all murder everybody. The, the sisters chained up to the... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, th- we're introduced to the main villain. Mm-hmm. So we've been seeing this guy with the crazy helmet who seems to be the leader of the Nazis. He's actually not. There's a oh, uh, an uber mensch or whatever who's the leader <laughs> who is Klaatu from the day the earth stood still. He comes mm-hmm. out and he's like a big robot man in a... It's wild. Um, but he has the sister. He's got her trapped. And you're like, oh, it's her. It's her. And they all fight. And they all uh, they get down to three people. Yeah. And it's our two that we know. And then this guy. Well, they, they all get their masks that they've been hiding themselves. They Ripped off. Ripped yeah. off. And surprise, and, the third one. Oh, it's Tom. Sting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Sting. <laughs> it's Sting. And they're like, oh, shit. Cool. And then they just yank the sister off the stage yeah, or she runs down there they just and kind of kill their way out of there no they don't they just let them leave oh okay yeah no literally the the evil nazi guy stands up and is like you have violated a nog ritual goddess of the urine she what are you doing here i'm gonna attack your people tomorrow but you can just leave now bye oh, okay <laughs> she's like all right Bye. Bye. And they just walk out. Yeah. And then there was supposed to be this big battle, yeah. but they realized they didn't have the budget for a big or, battle. Or the people. Or the people. So she's like, It is no use. The sun is up. I cannot warn my people in time. What do you want to do? 
I'm gonna fight it out here. Uh, it's too late. I can't get back and warn my people about the battle. We'll just have to fight here with the three of us. <laughs> or by myself. Right. So the big battle takes place on the, the bridge out in front of the... They dig up landmines to replace them. Yeah, they, they set up... A, I love... A scene ago, uh, bro didn't know what a bomb was. Yeah. This scene, he's daintily digging up and, like, <laughs> disarming landmines and stuff. It's like, all right, great. Um, and but they So they set up a big, like, minefield and traps and booby traps, and they build the world's worst looking bow and arrows out of like out of bow like sticks that they find on the ground um so they prepared this whole big battle and then the battle happens and it's just wave after wave of the nazis coming out and charging at them and they like get blown up by landmines they get shot with arrows they get they throw coke can smoke grenades at them that are literally cans of pepsi and coke that they turn into smoke grenades and then what happened bro gets shot in the arm with a harpoon bro gets shot in the arm with a harpoon we get the harpoon gun is back again um and now they're they're retreating and there's still a lot of guys left and they don't know what to do and they're like we're well we gotta go we gotta fight and uh uh, Sting picks up a giant board full of nails in it and like runs <laughs> it at the enemy. <laughs> it's so stupid. But right at this moment, Gandalf crests over the hill <laughs> at Helm's Deep to save yeah. the day. And it is Shanda and Rudolph riding horses followed by the entire army battalion of the She's army people or whatever. And they show up and save the day and the Nazis guy's like, we'll get you next time <laughs> and then runs back inside uh and that's it and they they go and then uh we get to the the barge where they showed up on mm -hmm. they're going back to go home i guess or whatever um and uh bros bro's sticking around because he's like eh, he's like uh, uh, cool. he's her, him and shanda or she too or whatever her name is they're uh <laughs> or do that um and then <laughs> for the kids um <laughs> and then <laughs> And then Tom is going to go back with his sister. <laughs> like, are you trying to sit that and just make it so much worse? <laughs> um, oh, no, this is what we, this is what we do. This is yeah. how we do I forgot. <laughs> this, this, this is sex on this program. <laughs> Um, uh, oh. so then but Tom's going to go back with his sister and you can, and he, he has a last go uh, goodbye with she and she wants to, she wants to tell him to stay. Mm. But she doesn't because she remembers the prophecy that if she lose my goddamn throne, she'll lose her throne or whatever if she's with a dude. And so he just leaves. But that is a tale for another time. Yeah. Mm. And then the movie ends. And I was like, oh, I guess that. All right. That's OK. That's he just leaves. That's the ending. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, they felt like they're because like we don't confront the actual evil villain, like the big bad Nazi guy is in one scene and then disappears. Uh, they don't finish off the Nazis. They just kind of run away. And then our our main couple don't end up together. They thought they were making a second movie. Yeah. Guess what? They no, never made a second no. movie. No. No. It's real bad. Um, but is it good bad, Kyle? It's, it's, it's on the cusp. It's on the cusp. I liked lots of elements of it were fun mm. and ridiculous. Uh, it was funny how horny it was. It, um, it's, I think it might be too episodic for it to be interesting enough to maintain throughout the whole film yeah yeah i don't disagree i mean it is going for an odyssey thing which is kind of interesting you know where they just like random little vignettes of like and then we ran into this purse wacky character or whatever mm -hmm. um but it's not super interesting it's fine you know what fuck it i'm feeling generous so let's go yeah, good, give bad. It good bad give it a good bad <laughs> i'm feeling generous i don't know if it actually is it's right on the line uh if you want to Trek for yourself you can go to amazon prime and search for she 1984 it's free right now it's free right now well, um, amazon prime free yeah yeah if you have amazon prime it's also on some other service that i think is free but i don't remember i can't Tubi remember or something like that. it wasn't Tubi. it was something else like that um that it, it should be free on there maybe but if you look it up you'll find mm. it um but yeah you can check it out and see it's 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 all right it's shorter too it's only like an hour and 30 minutes it's not as long as uh the next movie that we're doing <laughs> <laughs> filming these out of order <laughs> um oh. As always, you can do us a giant, huge, humongous, amazing favor and support us on patreon.com slash GBRBB. Mm -hmm. uh, get access to all kinds of stuff, including podcasts and that sort of thing. Access to podcasts, broken dreams, early episodes when we get them early, done. Early, yeah, early release when they get done early. Uh, and there was something else. Um, uh, access to Q&A where you can ask oh, us yeah, questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can ask us questions, that sort of thing. Um, also, it's a, a, a more limited suggestion pool. So, like, this one was mm -hmm. a patron suggestion, somebody who suggested it a bunch of times. So, it's just easier for me to see because we get thousands. By the way, once again, we get thousands of suggestions. Yes. Uh, literally thousands. So, uh, it's... It's not... I'm not ignoring you if we don't ever do your movie. It's just there's thousands of it's, them. It, there's a lot of them in... A lot of times, you know, we're, we're digging through a, uh, some of these films and we're, 
We can't get through all of them. No, there's, no, there's, there's just too many. There's, yeah, there's just too many. Time today. Uh, but uh, but we appreciate the recommendations mm-hmm. that we do get to them eventually, um, or try to get to some of them. Um, uh, I have a podcast called This Film's Lit. We talk about movies that are based on books. When this is out, the uh, yeah, most recent episode will be Tangled, which is uh, the Disney movie Tangled, and then the next episode after that will be A Scanner Darkly. So we got two extremes there, and then the one after that, I think, is Blue is the Warmest Color, which is a whole different extreme. So we've just got like it's everywhere. It's every we cover everything on the show. Um, uh, I'm very uh, unfamiliar with Blue is the Warmest Color. What? I don't know what Blue is the Warmest Color. Uh, it was, it's a French uh, film based on a graphic novel that's just a whole lot of girls fucking. It's very erotic. It, sound, it, it sounds French. <laughs> it's very French. Um, I, I saw it years ago, but it's apparently based on a graphic novel. So, um, And then... Uh, that's, the, that's the book that Brian suggested, or the movie Brian suggested. He's like, hey, hey. Hey. So this is based off a book. Katie, this is based Katie. on a book. Yeah, so is there it. any way we can do this? <laughs> I think it was a fan suggestion. I can't remember how we got on how that got on the list. Anyways. Um, uh, Kyle, you got a Twitch stream. You can do yes. Twitch TV dot, dot TV slash uh, whatever it's on the screen right now. Hitman or Minecraft or EverQuest. You can t- you know jump in the chat, ask questions, chit chat, yada yada. Brian's getting the humidity right is now. approximately eight thousand percent here today. I don't know how I'm maintaining my cool. <laughs> it's, it's not even that warm. It's just like it's like split pea soup in the air, and I hate it. Can we be done? <laughs> Anyways, thank you all, uh, and uh, keep watching movies. And until next time, no, until next time, keep watching movies. Especially, I think I'm dehydrated. She? <laughs> Especially she, man. Yeah, check it out. Give it a look. See what you think. Report back. Don't report back. Don't care what you think. <laughs> <All right. laughs>